Hey guys, Gertjan here and for today's video I wanted to show you how to recreate the point and shoot flash camera technique with a digital camera. Since I really like the look of film cameras and more specifically for this video a point and shoot with a flash camera, I searched and tried for many ways on how to recreate this effect on any brand of digital camera. We'll go over in terms of gear and later in this video I'm going to show you the edit process on recreating this effect in Lightroom. If you don't know me, my name is Gertjan van Voren. I'm a freelance video and photographer from Belgium and I make content on all sorts of this matter. Now let's get into it. I have a Fujifilm X-C3 which I use for everything professionally. I'm in a group that organizes events in nightclubs and festivals and we need content to put out on social media. So that's where I come in, but all of my other friends have cameras as well. Axel for example, he has a 35mm point and shoot made by Canon who does everything automatically. And to be honest, the pictures on there are incredible, especially when he puts Portra 400 or Kodak Gold in it. It's just something about that look that's really nostalgic and looks very cool. Meanwhile, I'm shooting with this digital camera and I'm trying to recreate this look to match the branding a little bit better. Now, what type of lens would be perfect for this matter? I would go with a 24 to 35 millimeter lens. I have, for example, the 18 to 55, which I use in 90% of the case, and this is perfect. But if you have a prime lens, then maybe a 27 millimeters or even a 35 millimeters might do the trick. Now the next thing you need that's very important is the flash. I'm using a Godox V860 number 2 and it's made specifically for Fujifilm. Now this is more professionally but you can use any flash that you want. For example there's a small flash that Fujifilm delivers with the X-T3 but unfortunately I lost it. But that might do the trick perfectly. Just any flash that you have is going to work. Next up what we want to do is point the flash directly at our subject because as you can see this flash is pointed directly at your subject and if you want to recreate this with an external flash then this is the way to go. You can put the flash on TTL which communicates with the camera. Use your exposure compensation and put it to minus one. If you have a very old flash or a flash that doesn't really communicate with your camera body, then you might play around with the exposure compensation on your camera body itself and dial in those settings on the flash until you're happy with the result. For extra nostalgia, you can add a bloom filter on top of the lens to get rid of that digital sharpness and really bloom out those highlights, which makes it look even more like film. So right now we are in Lightroom and I'm just gonna go over the process of how I edit this picture uh, to make it look like film. So first of all, I'm going to play a little bit with the exposure. I like the washed out highlights because it makes it look very imperfect. Enhance the contrast a little bit, raise the highlights, raise the shadows, maybe turn the exposure down a little bit, turn down the blacks, to separate the subject more from the background. Turn down those whites like so. Maybe add a little bit more clarity, a little bit more saturation and turn the vibrance a little bit down. Then we'll go over to the tone curve. Um, I like to lift the shadows and turn down those highlights. Then I'm going to make a slight S curve like so, just maybe a little bit too much. Okay, I'm gonna turn down turn down the contrast. All right. So next up is the color grading, and I've seen in film that the shadows are more likely to be blue, kind of a teal kind of look. So what we want to do is click on shadows right here and then search for that green kind of blue look. I like it right here and then play a little bit with the saturation. Now this is way too much. So turn it down around 16. Yeah, that's good. And then next I want a little bit more orange in the midtones. So turn it to the orange side. Yeah, 
that kind of looks very cool. All right, we're getting there. Now next, I'm going to add in a little bit of vignette. Turn the vignette a little bit down, not up. That's cringy. Turn it down. And then grain, very important. I like to put in around 25, maybe 35, push it a little bit more. And the size also 35. And we leave the roughness as it is. And as you can see, there is a little bit of grain in there. Maybe we can turn the hues more to the left and decrease the saturation. And now as a final touch, I want to separate the subject a little bit more and give it a little bit more grit. So what we can do is hit the masking tab and select the subject, turn down the exposure a little bit like so, and then turn up the clarity. Yeah, that looks cool. Maybe play a little bit more with the overall exposure. Hmm, not too much. All right, and that's it. That's how I edit the photo to make it more, I don't know, film-like. And I really like how it turns out. If you don't feel like editing and you have a Fujifilm camera, then I have good news for you because there is a Fujifilm recipe that you can use to make your pictures look like film. Shout out to Eddie Maynard for making this Fujifilm recipe and sharing it with us. Be sure to follow his YouTube channel as well. So that's it for this video. I really liked researching this topic and sharing it with you guys. Also, if you didn't notice yet, I'm in a different room right now. That's because we have moved to a new apartment. And look at this natural light in all of the rooms. I'm going to have a lot of fun here. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then hit the like button. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, of course. See you in the next one.